Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Thundernumble and I welcome you to the channel. Labyrinth Servant Arian was just announced today and I'm so happy that it's a really good card. I waited for this card in order to make a deck profile on the deck and I gotta say it's pretty amazing and it's probably gonna be a trio of in the deck. It's a level 4 Dark Fiend effect monster with 1800 attack and 1100 defense. Its effect reads, you can only use first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. First, send one normal trap from your hand or set on your field to the graveyard. Special summon one level 4 or lower fiend monster from your deck in defense position, except Labyrinth Servant Arian. And second, if a monster leaves the field due to the effect of your normal trap, you can draw one card and you can apply the following. Either special summon one fiend monster from your hand, or directly set one spell or trap card from your hand. This card gives you enough consistency to run this deck pure and I'm so happy about it, so without further ado, let's get into the deck profile. So here we are with the deck list, and this list is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, first of all, we have Absolute King uh, Backjack. This card, uh, when it's sent to the graveyard, you can look at top three cards of your deck, then uh, stack them in any order, and during your opponent's turn, you can banish it from the graveyard, look at the top card of your deck, and if it's a normal trap, you can set it to your field, and it can be activated this turn. Uh, which is pretty interesting because we have Archwind Glitch, which says if we control a fiend monster, we can target a card on the field, destroy it, then send one fiend type monster from the deck to the graveyard. So basically, uh, if we send uh, Jack, we potentially have another trap to activate after we've activated Glitch. Uh, next up, we have Labyrinth Archfiend. This card is not really mandatory, it's not that amazing, but you can use it sometime in a, sometimes in a pinch and it has a pretty decent recursion. Uh, so first of all it gains 400 attack for each normal trap uh, in the graveyard. Uh, it blocks your opponent from attacking fiend monsters except this one. So let's say if you side in barrier statue after game 1, uh, and you summon Labyrinth Archfiend, your opponent cannot attack over your barrier statue, which makes it a pretty nifty lock, I guess. Um, next up, uh, once per turn, if a trap is activated, you can special this card from your hand, which is pretty neat. Uh, it's a free special summon, but you can special summon it off of your Arian and Ariana, so it's not the biggest thing in the world. And uh, once per turn, you can set a normal trap... Uh, no. Uh, you can target one normal trap in your graveyard, set it to your field, but it cannot be activated unless you control a fiend monster. This is the important part. Now, when it's summoned, it does search for uh, for our fair welcome, which is uh, not the most amazing card in the world, but sometimes you need to get over big monsters. And uh, it says when a monster declares an attack, so you can use it when you declare an attack. Uh, not only when your opponent declares an attack. And also it searches a non-labyrinth normal trap, which is probably the best part about this card. Uh, next, we, uh, next we have uh, one Chandra and one Stove. These pretty much do the same thing. You can discard, um, actually send this card from hand or field to the graveyard, then set one Labyrinth Spell Trap di directly from the deck. And if a monster leaves the field uh, because of a normal trap while this card is in your graveyard, you can add this one to your hand and you can special summon this one. Now, these are pretty much used basically only for uh, chain blocking. So if you have these uh, in your graveyard and you want to resolve a big chain, these cards will be the last cards in the chain in order to prevent your opponent from interacting with your important searches and other effects. Uh, next up we have the uh, Triple Labyrinth Kuklok. Uh, now this is probably one of the craziest cards in the deck. You can discard this card and then activate one uh, normal trap the turn you set it. So you can use this in pretty much all of your combos to get your engine going. Uh, next we have a Labyrinth of the Silver Castle. Now, this is only a one-off, but it has the greatest effect in the world and it's easily recurrable, so unless your opponent banishes it, you're pretty much fine. Um, first of all, your opponent cannot activate normal traps uh, in the monster effects in response to your normal traps. And also, when you pop a card with your uh, normal trap, you can uh, destroy one of their cards on the field or in their hand. And also, once per turn, you can target one normal trap in your graveyard, set it to your field, but it cannot be activated until you control, unless you control a fiend monster. Uh, so pretty much similar to Labyrinth Arch Fiend, but just a tad bit better, I would say. Uh, next, we have uh, Triple Arian, the newly revealed card, which says you can send one normal trap from your hand or your side of the field to the graveyard, special summon level 4 or lower, fiend monster from your deck in defense position, except Arian. If an effect... Uh, 
If an effect monster leaves the field due to your normal trap's effect, you can draw one card, then you can either special summon your one fiend monster from your hand or set one spell trap from your hand. Uh, now, this one is important because you can special summon your Ariana uh, with its effect and then you can use the Ariana effect to search and also you get extra advantage on your opponent's turn when you use your trap card. So basically it's just a free advantage engine that just keeps going and going and going. Um, next we have a triple Labyrinth Servant Ariana. If this card is normal special summon, you can add one Labyrinth card from your deck to your hand and then the second effect is same as Arian. Next up we have Lord of Heavenly Prison, which is your back row protector and also when you activate your last trap you can special summon it to set another one from your deck and uh, you can then discard the Kuklok Clock to activate it during the turn you set it, so it's, it's pretty amazing to have in the deck honestly. Uh, we have one field spell, which is the most amazing field spell in the world because all of your uh, welcome traps pop in addition to their effects and also if we activate a non labyrinth trap card which is almost all of our trap cards we can special summon a fiend monster from our hand or graveyard uh, so yeah we only run one of these because they are easily accessible because we have triple arian and triple ariana which can all set search the card well i mean Arian can summon Ariana and then Ariana can search the card and we have Chandra and Stove to set the card to our field so it's not a big deal, we can access it almost every time when we need it. Uh, we have one Labyrinth setting, now this card might seem like the most crazy card in the world but you have so much recursion in this deck that you don't often even want to resolve it. Uh, so it says target two of your Labyrinth spells or traps that are banished and on in the or in the graveyard, except Labyrinth setting, shuffle them into the deck. Uh, then if you control a fiend monster you can set one non labyrinth normal trap with different names from your deck uh, up to the number of cards shuffled so basically you shuffle two and then you set like uh, let's say idp or um, idp and dogmatic punishment probably um, next up we have triple pot of extravagance which is basically a card draw engine uh, we have archfiend glitch so we've talked about it uh, with its interactions with backjack but also if you have the field field spell uh, you can send any of your uh, fiends that you want to special summon because it is it is not a labyrinth card So field triggers on resolution so you would activate the glitch Destroy a card on the field foolish whatever fiend you want and then you can revive it with a field spell uh, We have triple compulsory evacuation device which is just uh, Targeting removal that is non-destruction. We have triple dogmatica punishment one fair welcome uh, triple Ice Dragon's Prison, double impermanence, now you could bump this up to 3 but it's non-destruction, it's just effect negation so it doesn't interact with the deck in the most amazing way. But it is a hand trap and you probably want to have some insurance going second so yeah. Uh, going second probably you want to side in the gamma package and probably play triple impermanence. And we have a uh, triple welcome labyrinth which is probably the best trap in the deck which special summons uh, a labyrinth monster from the deck. Uh, in the side deck, some suggestions that you could uh, include would be Archfiend Ares, because it's a fiend that you can send off of your Archfiend glitch to search your uh, Labyrinth Archfiend, then you can special summon it and add a fair welcome Labyrinth. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a garnet considering the fact that you cannot discard it off of Stove and Chandra and still get off its effect. So yeah, if you want it, that's great. You can run it. Uh, we have Barrier Statue of the Abyss, now depending on the meta this could be a main deck option or a side deck option because you can special summon it with uh, Arian, you can also foolish it and then revive it uh, with your glitch and field combo and yeah it's pretty neat and also Protector of the Sanctuary if your opponent is searching a lot you can just put a stop to that basically with the same combo of glitch and uh, field spell. Uh, for the extra deck we have triple uh, Elder Entity Antis. This is just for our Dogmatica Punishment, same with uh, Wind Pegasus at Ignister. Now here I opted to run something quirky, you don't have to run this engine, I just found it interesting. Um, you can just run uh, like Baguska and other Nightmares and whatever fiends you want, or maybe just expand the uh, Punishment package. But yeah, you can um, uh, summon Arian, go into Ariana, then overlay for Caesar, overlay for Marksman, overlay for Machinex, and you can stop there, or you can just go ahead, attack, and then overlay for Zeus. Uh, this is just basically a, a meme package that I'm trying out, but 
if you like it, go for it. And also we have double relinquished anima, because uh, we have uh, Absolute King Backjack and uh, Ku Klok, which we can use to suck our opponent's monsters. Without further ado, let's get into the combos. Okay, so for this combo you would need uh, Ku Klok, which is definitely the card that you need. Uh, you will need access to your Welcome Labyrinth, which you can do by having Chandra or Stove in your hand and then you will need a labyrinth monster on the field which in this case Ariana will be used because it can search any of the other missing pieces and you will need to have the field spell so this is basically a three card combo but let's say uh, we drew a hand like like this maybe uh, so we have our um, Ariana and uh, we have our field spell or this could be welcome it doesn't really matter so we can use ariana to search the missing piece uh, then we can use the effect of in this case chandra discarding it and the cuckoo clock to set the welcome to your uh, spell and trap zone then the effect of cuckoo clock will be activated so you can add it to your hand and then you can immediately activate the cuckoo clock so you can activate the labyrinth on turn it was set so your setup should look something like this. You activate the field spell, you activate the welcome labyrinth, and you special summon the big lady, the silver castle. Now you can use the effect of silver castle setting back the labyrinth. And then on your opponent's turn, when they start playing, you can activate the welcome labyrinth, special summoning the Arian from your deck. And then the Labyrinth Labyrinth will uh, activate so you can pop a card on their field. And then you can either pop a card on their field or in their hand. But this is not all. Because you have uh, destroyed their card with your uh, Welcome Labyrinth, which gained the effect by uh, Labyrinth Labyrinth, uh, you can activate Arian, Ariana, and also you can activate Chandra in the graveyard. So what these two will do is they will draw you two cards and then you will be able to set them to your field or uh, special summon them if they are fiend monsters and then uh, we'll have the chandra to also set a card uh, with its effect so uh, let's say we have uh, chilling one ariana chilling two arian chilling three chandra so we drew a dogmatica punishment we'll set that uh, then we drew into lord of heavenly prison which isn't amazing but it's good enough for what we are going to do uh, next up, because these cards cannot be activated, now this could have been IDP, Compulse, whatever normal trap you desire to have, uh, Archfiend's Glitch, whatever. Uh, so, we can use the effect of Chandra here, uh, sending it to the graveyard with the card that we drew that we don't want to use, and then we can set another Welcome or Fair Welcome, depending on what you need in this particular situation. Uh, let's say we want to use Fair Welcome for whatever reason. So we'll set this. And then the Cuckoo Clock will activate, so we can add it back to our hand. Now, we have set a card from uh, Ariana, I believe it was, I don't really remember. And we can uh, use the quick effect of uh, Cuckoo Clock, discarding it, so we can activate Dogmatica Punishment on our opponent's turn. Now, this is whatever you searched, but yeah, you, you get the gist. Uh, we have uh, Double Pops here. And uh, in case, well, this, this for welcome now cannot be activated, but it doesn't really matter because you've started off with uh, three cards in the hand, so you have two more. Um, now, on the follow-up, uh, we will draw a card, which, again, it doesn't really matter at all. Uh, but we also, what we also could use, we because we've used the Dogmatica Punishment, which is not a Labyrinth card, we could have uh, special summoned the Chandra back from our graveyard. And then we can use the effect of Chandra on our turn to set any, well, basically a welcome, because we, we already used a fair welcome. Now, it's kinda neat that you can also use the Labyrinth of Silver Castle in order to set a normal trap, so in this case a Dogmatica Punishment, so we get that as well. And then we can use the effect of Chandra, sending it and uh, whatever we drew, <coughs> because it doesn't really matter to set a welcome from our deck and then we can just go ahead and use let's say Arian here sending it sending a trap to the graveyard to special summon another Ariana then Ariana's effect will be activated so considering that we have double welcome uh, we can uh, use the uh, setting 
And then we can activate the setting, shuffling back these two into our deck to set two more spells or traps. So let's say, I don't know, IDP and... Um, and whatever, we have Dogmatica Punishment already, so let's say IDP and Archfiend's Glitch. And from this point our opponent has probably lost. Uh, so this is the basic gist of how the deck runs. Every turn you get free advantage off of everything, so unless your opponent uh, activates, well, almost exactly evenly matched, you're probably fine. Uh, without further ado, let's get into the test hands. So, as always, we'll start a new solo mode, just so you guys know that I'm not stacking my hands. And we drew Absolute King Backjack, which is not the most amazing thing in the world, and we also drew the Silver Castle, but it's gonna be fine, because this deck has so much consistency, it doesn't really affect it at all. So we're gonna normal summon the uh, Aryan. We're gonna send uh, either Compulse or IDP, uh, let's say we send the Compulse here. So we're gonna activate the effect of Arian, send the Compulse. Uh, using the effect of Arian we can uh, special summon the Ariana from our deck. Uh, now the effect of Ariana will activate. And at this point I'm pretty sure we want to discard this back check. So, because we don't even have the either the welcome or the field spell. So, let's say we go for stove here. Uh, we'll use the effect of uh, stove discarding it and uh, backjack to set a welcome from our deck. And then we can use the effect of backjack to look at the top three cards of our uh, deck. And we can set the Archfiend glitch, it seems. So let's stack it so we draw the extravagance on the follow-up. So we'll set the IDP, we'll set the welcome, and uh, we have the blackjack. So uh, when our opponent's turn starts, we can use the blackjack, uh, milling the glitch, which is absolutely fine. Then uh, we can start off by, uh, let's say, using... Um, glitch here uh, with the effect of glitch we can dis destroy uh, one card on their field hopefully a monster card because then uh, our Ariana Arian and Stow will uh, all trigger so first of all glitch will send a monster from our deck to the graveyard which in this case is probably gonna be cuckoo clock because uh, we're gonna be using some effects later so let's say chilling one Ariana chilling two Arian chilling three stove because we have destroyed their monster so we'll get to draw a card and then here we can s either set a dogmatica punishment or uh, we can uh, special summon the silver castle let's say we special summon the silver castle it's fine then we draw an additional card which is in this case pot of extravagance and we'll set the punishment so uh, from this point on uh, we can uh, we could also use the effect of welcome labyrinth, but it doesn't really do us any good because we don't have the field spell already But it's fine because we can use the effect of a stove here discarding the pot of extravagance to set a Fair welcome from our deck or we can even set the field spell which we don't have access to So let's say we just set the field spell and then we can use the effect of cuckoo clock adding it back to our hand from this point we can we have the ice dragons prison we have also the dogmatica punishment and uh, because this Dogmatica Punishment was set on this turn, we will have to discard the Cuckoo Clock in order to activate it, but this is absolutely fine. Uh, so let's say our opponent continues playing, we can use the effect of uh, Cuckoo Clock to be able to activate this Punishment here. And if we send, let's say, the Entis from our extra deck to the graveyard, we can destroy two cards on their field, and then we can use the effect of Silver Castle, destroying an additional card in their hand. Um, if they still continue playing, then we can uh, activate the effect of Ice Dragon's Prison in order to banish one of their cards, and hopefully this is good enough to stop them from playing. On the follow-up, we just uh, get million cards of free advantage, so we are probably just fine as is. Uh, we are going to activate this Welcome Labyrinth in order to special summon an additional Ariana, which uh, we can use then to search for our uh, Archfiend, probably, because uh, it's a big monster that we can have on our side of the board. If I can find it, I, I just... Oh, I drew it, okay. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So, because we drew it, uh, we'll go for Chandra, it doesn't really matter, as I was saying. 
um, it's pretty much fine either way you slice it. So if we want to go for big XC's plays, we can do that. Or alternatively, we can use the effect of Silver Castle. Silver Castle can set us. Uh, I don't know. It's fine either way. We can use. Let's say. Oh right, we've used the Gmatic Punishment, so we cannot go into the extra deck. But this is perfectly fine because uh, we have other cards to to use. So we'll uh, go ahead and use the Silver Castle. Silver Castle will set us the punishment. Then we can use the effect of Chandra. Uh, Chandra will be able to discard itself and the Archfiend. The, these will be able to set us uh, a welcome from our deck. Uh, we can poke for some decent damage, I guess. And then on the follow-up we have enough to basically destroy our opponent. Uh, first of all, let's say we use uh, Dogmatica Punishment, so we destroy uh, yet again three cards because we've use Dogmatica Punishment to destroy a monster and we have the field spell, we can special summon back the, uh, let's say, I don't know, let's say Chandra and then we get to draw two more cards and then set two if they are traps. So we <laughs> drew into IDP and uh, Dogmatica Punishment. Now this Dogmatica Punishment isn't really useful because we've already used one this turn. So we can use it as this card fodder for Chandra and then we can set doesn't matter yet again. Let's say we we set the setting. It's fine um, This procs our cuckoo clock so we can use the effect of cuckoo clock add it back to our hand We can activate IDP yet again. We can use the effect of welcome labyrinth and uh, anytime we want to revive a, a Monster from our graveyard. We can just do that because we can activate either dogmatica punishment or IDP to bring back the uh, Archfiend which can then use its effect to add us a fair welcome, and yeah, it's it's pretty much insane advantage. So let's see another hand. Okay, in this hand we have Pot of Extravagance, which we can use to banish six and draw two. Uh, perfectly fine. We just need to draw into a starter, and there it is. We can just reveal the Lord of Heavenly Prison. Now, this is kind of uh, sad because we will have to send the IDP uh, to the graveyard, so... Well, what can you do? So we'll uh, normal summon the Aryan, uh, set the IDP, or we can just send it from our hand, it doesn't really matter, use the effect of uh, Aryan. Uh, with the effect of Aryan, we can um, special summon if I can find her. There it is, Ariana. Ariana will then use her effect. Uh, and I don't think we are we are getting the field spell in this particular scenario. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and add uh, either Chandra or uh, Stove. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're gonna add the Chandra. Then using the effect of Chandra, we can discard it and the Cuckoo Clock uh, to set the welcome from our deck. Then the Cuckoo Clock will uh, bring itself back into our hand. And then with the effect of uh, Cuckoo Clock, we can activate Welcome yet again to special summon the uh, Silver Castle. And with the effect of Silver Castle, we can set back either the IDP or the Welcome. Uh, in this particular case, I believe we are better off uh, setting the IDP, unfortunately, because we do not have the field uh, to prevent our opponent from... To, to get the extra advantage from popping our opponent's cards. But this is perfectly fine because we do have the Lord of Heavenly Prison. So if uh, we didn't want to, let's say, go for the IDP, we could event for Welcome Labyrinth. Okay, I'll, I'll just show you rather than talk about it. So let's say we set the Welcome Labyrinth. Uh, then on our opponent's turn, we can use the Welcome Labyrinth and then uh, special summon the Lord of Heavenly Prison. Now with the effect of uh, Welcome Labyrinth, we're gonna summon um, Stove from our deck. And then the Lord of Heavenly Prison will be able to set us, let's say, a Dogmatica Punishment. This is, this is probably a good one. So we'll set the Dogmatica Punishment, then we can use the effect of Stove, discarding it and the Labyrinth Archfiend. We can also discard the setting, but I think it's better to keep here um, for the follow-up. So we'll be able to set yet another welcome from our deck, or we can just set a fair welcome, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's say we set the fair welcome, it's, it's fine, it's whatever. Um, so we set the fair welcome with this, and then we can use the effect of uh, Cuckoo Clock, add it back to our hand. 
And now we can use this punishment that we set off of Lord of Heavenly Prison, so... We can use uh, Cuckoo Clock, discard it, use the punishment. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, banished all of our Antises, which is fine, because we can just set the Pegasus, destroy one. Then we can use the effect of Silver Castle, destroy another. Uh, here, Ariana and Arian will trigger, and also we get the proc for a Stove or a Chandra. Unfortunately, not both, because uh, we don't have the space on our board, but this is absolutely fine. So we'll draw one. Uh, we don't want to set this, but we can set the glitch. Now, sadly, this glitch cannot be used on this turn, but it's perfectly fine because uh, we have enough bodies to keep us safe. And in case something goes awry, we have setting and extravagance for next turn, which is basically... Uh, let's say our opponent destroys everything, we still start off the next turn with uh, four cards. So... this is pretty insane. So, let's see. Uh, we go for extravagance, we draw additional two cards, and then we can use the effect of setting, shuffling back uh, the farewell come and the welcome into our decks. So from here on out we can set uh, whatever two cards we prefer to have on our field. Uh, let's say in this case we go for punishment and glitch. Now it's also important that your opponent does not know which is which because you're setting them from your deck, but it's it's fine either way. Uh, we can set the Compulse. We could normal summon the Aryan, send a trap, then um, special summon Ariana from our deck. But we can also just, you know, normal summon Ariana, use the effect to search. So basically this is five cards uh, from our opponent destroying our entire board. And honestly, unless they otk us or by some miracle destroyed our entire board, we should be fine. Let's check another hand. So, this hand is, uh, let's say, different. Uh, we do have uh, Punishment, Compulse and Welcome, but we only have Stove here. And Stove can basically only set us the field spell. So, let's say we use the Stove discarding it and the Archfiend in order to set the field spell. And then from here on out we'll set 3, activate the field spell and pass it back to our opponent. So, uh, this isn't the greatest thing in the world, but we can still play. So, when they start playing, we can use the Welcome. Uh, it gains the effect to pop with the Field Spell, so that's pretty much fine. Uh, from here on out, we can um, summon... Let's say we summon Ariana, because it's kind of an interesting play that we can do with her. So, we summon the Ariana, destroy their monster, use the effect of Ariana, and we get to search for the Silver Castle. Uh, now they continue playing and hopefully we can use the Compulse to bounce back one of their monsters Which then triggers uh, Ariana as Chainlink 1 and let's say Field Spell uh, as Chainlink 2 on the resolution So we can bring back the Archfiend and then we can even uh, use Chainlink uh, 3 I believe Stove to special summon itself because the monster left the field So we special summon the Stove, we special summon the Archfiend and then we get the effect of uh, Ariana to draw a card, and then we can special summon the Silver Castle. We also could set the Dogmatica Punishment, but we already have one, and we don't have a way to activate it on this turn, because we don't have access to Cuckoo Clock yet. So, I guess Silver Castle is our best bet. Uh, from here on out, we can use the effect of Labyrinth Archfiend, and uh, it can search us our Fair Welcome, which is a free discard at worst. Uh, if I can just find it, yep, there it is. And then uh, we have three more pops with our Dogmatica Punishment, and if that's not good enough, then I don't know what is. Uh, let's try yet another hand. Okay, this hand seems like garbage, and it actually is, so we'll use Lord of Heavenly Prison to reveal it, and then we'll just set Welcome and Fair Welcome and pray for <laughs> the best. Um, basically, we cannot use the Cuckoo Clock because we don't have a, a Labyrinth Monster on our field, so our best bet is just to use uh, Welcome and then summon Ariana, get some searches. Uh, we can also use Lord of Heavenly Prison to set a card, but I don't believe this is the most amazing thing in the world. So basically, what we would do here is activate uh, Welcome, 
special summon, uh, let's say, Ariana, then Ariana can use her effect in order to search as the Silver Castle. And then because we uh, activated the Trap card, we can use Lord of Heavenly Prison in order to set a Dogmatica Punishment from our deck. Uh, if I can just find the Silver Castle. Now, luckily here we have uh, Ariana, so uh, at any point we can just activate Ku Clock. Use the Dogmatica Punishment, destroying two of their cards with the Antis and uh, Trap. And then Ariana will trigger, and we have nothing else in the graveyard, sadly. So Ariana will trigger, uh, we get to draw a card, and then we can special summon the Silver Castle onto our field. Is this good? Uh, I don't think so. This is probably the worst hand we've had yet, but we do have the fair welcome in case they uh, try to attack. So we can destroy two of their cards on the field and set let's say IDP or Dogmatica Punishment or Archfiend's Glitch to set up our graveyard for next turn. But yeah, it's not looking like this is the greatest hand. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel because it's literally free for you and it would mean so much to me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!